we are going to start talking about MLA documentation when we use sources. I have gone to course documents to the Little Seagull Handbook, which is in your course documents, as I just said, and I am on page 123. I have blown it up nice and big so you can see. Um, notice that you look at the page numbers on the actual PDF itself that are printed on the book. It doesn't really line up with what the uh, PDF number is and I'm in the MLA style section and I want to talk about what you put where and and periods and all of the parentheses and all of the things that you're going to do so um, and, and you can go through and I would recommend opening up the handbook on this tab when you take the documentation uh, quiz. You'll notice that when you read the Amy Tan this week, I had you practice by putting the paragraph number in parentheses like this. Um, if we didn't know the author, you would put Tan as well. Notice that this book is written by someone named McCullough and it says McCullough describes John Adams hands as those of someone used to doing used to manual labor notice that these words are not exact words they are called what is we call paraphrase which means the author of this paper has put the idea in his or her own words since the author is named here all you need to put in parentheses is the page number. So in MLA style, the two things that you really need are author's last name and page number somewhere when you are using information. Uh, there are some things that happen sometimes when one of those things is not available though. So we're going to look at all of these examples. If the author is not named in where you are writing, you're going to put the author in the parentheses. So notice this one also has exact words. Um, notice that the quotation marks. So if you are going to use exact words, make sure that you get them inside quotation marks. And that might even be just two or three words um, that are so specific to the way it was written in the original. You may notice when you look back at my Amy Tan that one of the examples I had, I had a little small um, couple of words that were so specific to what she says that I want to put that in, in quotation marks in the middle of my paraphrase. If you have two or more works by the same author, um, number three is what you will do. I don't think we have anything today that um, says that. Uh, we, there might be on the quiz, though. So notice um, that you would name the actual work by the author if you are reading several works by the same author. Um, authors with the same last name, you're going to use the first initial. Um, and then MLA has changed a little bit, uh, and I have to look this one up too. If you have two authors, you're going to name both of them the last names. And then notice here's a page number. This might is probably in a preface, so you can have that there. Um, notice that if you have three or more authors, so if there's two, you're going to name both of them. If you have three or more, you're going to use this Latin expression. You might want to write this down, et all. Notice it's two words, it's lowercase, et all, with a period after it. Et all um, is a fancy way of saying, and everybody else, okay? So if you have more than two authors, you're only going to name the first one, and you're going to put et all. That's kind of new with MLA style when they revised it last. We used to name the first three, uh, but we don't anymore. Um, if you have an organization, if you're doing uh, you know, research and uh, they do not name a specific author. Notice the Social Security Administration could be uh, your author instead. Notice if the author is unknown, you're going to use the next thing, which would be the name of the article or the name of the poem or the name of the short story. If we do not have an author, we're going to put the name of the article. Notice that uh, when refer referring to uh, literary works, uh, this can happen um, if it's got a page number and a chapter. Uh, verse plays uh, like Shakespeare or even the Bible when you have um, verse you're going to have uh, and that's probably on this list as well. Uh, you can see poems poems and how they were do done. Uh, a work in an anthology. So notice that uh, it's in this uh, collection. Um, you can see 
uh, how this is done. Um, this would be uh, like if we had a textbook that had a lot of different stories in it. So you can notice that it's according to this person who's there and it's on this page. Um, in short, a collection of creative nonfictions. Readers will find both an essay on Scottish tea by this person and a piece on teapots um, by this person. And these are listed in there. Um, so, so you're telling um, what they can find. If you are going to get something from an encyclopedia or uh, a dictionary, uh, you will notice that you will go to uh, the author's name if it's available. For an entry without an author, you're going to give the entry's title in paraphrase. Uh, so you'll notice that if uh, the entry is um, hustling chess games in Washington Square, and then we have, you know, people, but if you're looking up a word in the dictionary and there's no author, um, and say you look up keenly, for example, um, keenly would be uh, what, what you would put uh, for where that goes. All right. So here is where, this is how a uh, sacred text, like the Bible, Genesis um, 1.1 through 2. Um, so it's going to be a uh, book and verse. Uh, if you have um, a multi-volume work, two or more works cited together, Tanner and Smith have looked at works from cultural perspective. So it gets into all of the different kinds of situations that you can have. Uh, if you ever have someone who quotes someone else, Charlotte Bronte wrote to G.H. Lewis, why do you like Miss Austen so very much? I'm puzzled on that point. And someone named Tanner wrote a, a biography probably about this. And so the QTD stands for quoted in Tanner. So notice uh, you don't need to memorize all of this, but you need to know how to look it up in the book. So while you were doing research, you can see all of these different things uh, that can happen. Um, so you can notice this. I'm just kind of scrolling through here because uh, the next thing that you will have is uh, this This next section in the book is how to do the works cited page. We're not going to be working on that right now, but we will get to it. What to do when you have one author, two authors, if it's from the internet. Um, so all of these uh, kinds of issues are in our handbook that you can look up um, starting on page 122.